Welcome back to another tutorial. Today I will show you how you can fly through your own timeline. And it looks way harder than it is. The only thing you need is a screenshot from your timeline and make sure you have only your timeline and not the preview window or effects tab or something else, just this one. Then create with this a new Fusion clip and open it up in the Fusion page. First disconnect your media in from the media out and take a background node and connect it to the media out and you can leave it to black or just change the color to whatever background color you want to have. And then our media in, our screenshot, we need to put it into the 3D space. So we go up here, click on the image plane 3D, then we need a merge 3D and a render 3D and then plug the render 3D into your background on this square. This creates a merge node and goes automatically to the media out. And to animate this whole thing, we need a camera 3D, plug it into the merge 3D and then hit shift and spacebar and type in transform 3D. And to have the overview, select your merge 3D and plug it into your left viewer. So we have the overview how everything looks. First, we want to position our screenshot so it's in the same direction like our camera. So select your image plane, go over here to transform. Then down here on rotation, on the X position, type in minus 90. So it flips down like this. And then on the Y rotation, positive 90. So just 90, so it's in the same direction like our camera. Then we put it a little bit more down. So you see now it's visible. Then go to the camera. We want to have not a narrow view like this. We want to have a wide view. So we have more like a fish eye on, on our camera. So here on angle of view, just put it all the way up to 90. So you can see we have much wider view here. So this makes this effect way more engaging. Then go back to the image plane and just position the image plane how you want it to have. So it looks good and position it a bit more down so you don't have this cut here. So like minus 0.1 should be fine from the position. And then go down here to scale and just scale it up to a scale you like. For example, like 3.5 should be very good. Now you can reset the set position by just double clicking here on set because then we are back on our pivot point and then we can animate everything with our transform from the 3D cam. So this is basically the whole setup for the animation later. First, we want to adjust our screenshot so it looks a bit more engaging. So select your screenshot, hit shift and spacebar, type in color corrector. And then I want to turn down the lift a little bit so it gets a bit more darker like this. And then hit shift and spacebar and type in soft glow. So I really like to have a glow on this so it pops a bit more out from, from the dark background. Something like this. So now we can start with the animation. Make sure you're at the very first frame. Then position your camera at the beginning of your timeline or at the end here and set a keyframe and then my clip is roughly six seconds long so i go around like frame 50 i want to be back in the middle so i type in zero then i'm in the middle of the timeline and set there also a keyframe because now i want to have the camera to look down fly up make like a 360 degrees rotation flies back down and then all the way to the end of our timeline and I want this whole animation like around two seconds. So I go one second further. In my timeline, it's 25 frames. And then I just reposition the camera. The set position is the same because I want the camera to have at the same position here. Then with the X rotation, I can tilt my camera down. So I type here in minus 90. Then with the Y translation, I can lift my camera up somewhere around here. And with the Y rotation, I can rotate my camera and I want a half rotation at, at the top. So I type in 180 like this. So this is where I want the camera to have at this point. Then I go once again, 25 frames further to 100 here. And here I set the end position of the camera back down on the ground. So here on the Y rotation, I'm at 360 degrees. On the X rotation, I'm back at zero. So I'm looking back in this direction. 
and the Y translation I position manually because later I want to give it a twist so I don't go too much down because I will cut it out. So I go around 0.15, should be fine I think. So a quick explanation what we've done so far. At frame 0 we are at this position. Then from frame 0 to frame 50 we're just going backwards like this until frame 50. Then the next 25 frames we lift our camera up with a rotation like so. And then from frame 75 to frame 100 we end our rotation and go back down to the same position. Then all the way at the end I want the camera to have back here with a full rotation done with like a barrel roll. So here on frame 100 make sure you have a keyframe on the set position and here on the set rotation as well. Then go all the way to the last frame, adjust your set position where you want the camera to have and here on the set rotation just type in 360 because that's a full rotation. So from frame 100 to frame 150 it just goes back and we do this full rotation around our timeline like this. So when you've done everything right your camera goes back to frame 50 then 25 frames it flips up then 25 frames it flips back down and the last 50 frames it goes back with a barrel roll. And now of course we need to smoothen out all the keyframes. Go up here to splines, open it up, make sure transform 3D is enabled so you have all your keyframes here. Click on this icon, zoom to fit, then press command or control A and press S. Then watch your animation, how it looks. Looks not so bad. In my opinion, this flip is too fast. I want the flip to start earlier. So around here, I want the camera to flip up. So I open it up again in the fusion page. So this red line here is our set position where the camera flies back. So I deselect this one, the set offset, because I think that's good. Then I select all the other keyframes here, hold down shift. And when my mouse looks like that, I drag it back. Not on this position, it should start earlier. So when I play back, I go back with the camera and from here on, the flip already starts like this. Looks in my opinion way better because the camera doesn't go just backwards and then the flip starts. The flip starts why we do this backwards movement. I hope you can follow these steps. And then once again just select everything and press S once again so you have uh, your adjustments smoothen out. And then just play it back. In my opinion way better when it starts earlier. Maybe we can do this barrel roll at the end also a bit earlier so this is the set rotation so i will deselect everything else and just select this keyframe from the set rotation and i hold down shift and drag it back as well so this starts a bit earlier like here back in the edit page play it back this looks very good and the rotation also it all the movements are flowing together like this so it's not just one movement happening then stops and then comes the next movement so make sure you you combine these movements together and once you've understand those splines it, it's very easy so you have here the set position going back and while this happening you can hear the other movements already starting and here when we fly back with our camera this set rotation already start so when you combine these these different movements together and flow it together uh, this this creates very engaging movement so make sure play around with with the splines with your keyframes and once you you get the understanding from this you can create very very wild things and at the end when you're happy with your animation go to the render 3d Go to settings and enable motion blur quality around 8, shutter angle around 300. 
And trust me, do this at the end, your PC will thank you. That's it for the fly-through animation, have fun creating and see you in the next one.